Hi guys, welcome to another episode of In The Game Room Podcast. Now I just uploaded a video just a couple of days ago, so this one's coming right after it. But this has been sitting on my workbench for a couple of weeks and I haven't opened it yet and I'm really anxious to open it. So I want to do a little first impressions video for you guys. What this is, is the Higgins LCM3 from Rubicon Models. See if you can get a good look at it here. This is a resin kit, uh, mostly resin. I think there's some metal pieces as well. I haven't opened it yet, so I'm not sure. Um, but this is a very limited edition kit from Rubicon. Um, this is not sort of the normal thing they do. Normally something this big would probably be injection molded and they'd make, you know, thousands of kits. But this one they just made, um, actually I don't know how many they made. I can tell you that uh, Rubicon USA got 11 of these and I got one of them. So however many went to Rubicon in uh, the UK or Japan, I don't know. Maybe equal amounts, maybe they only made, you know, 30 or 40 of these, I don't know. I don't know what the total was. But I do know it's a very limited production thing. It's, you know, once it's sold out, they're probably not going to make any more. It was sort of a one-off thing they did. So I was very anxious to get it. Um, as a result of it being a limited edition product like that, um, it's, it's expensive. It's not, um, I don't know what you would expect to pay for a 156 scale uh, Higgins boat like this. Um, but it probably wouldn't be $130, but that's what this costs. And because it's limited edition, you know, I'm totally cool with that. Um, it's not a, I mean, it's not a collector's item. You know, I don't even know how many they made and I don't really care. I'm going to build this thing and, uh, you know, use it. So, uh, so that's that. Look in here. This is a uh, first opening. So first impressions. Um, for such a limited edition uh, product, you know, they put some they put some work into doing a proper instruction manual. Very nicely done. Looks like any one of their other kits, you know, any of their plastic kits. So they didn't skimp on that, that's for sure. And again, that probably figures, a lot of this figures into the cost. So usually with a kit, uh, the, the packaging, the instruction sheets, you know, all these different uh, costs that go into developing it. It's usually spread out over, you know, thousands of kits, so they, they recoup it. In this case, they've got to uh, spread it out over, you know, a few dozen kits, I guess. So that's, uh, that's why the higher price. So, let's look at this and see what we got. Throw some parts out. The interesting thing about this, you know, there's many interesting things about this, is that it uh, is these are resin castings these are not injection molded parts but they look like injection molded parts are very very high quality castings and trying to see here where there may be sprue entry points and whatnot they must have uh, trimmed these off really really nice because I don't see I don't see the sprue. I still, I'd see maybe some injection points here, but the detail on these, the uh, diamond plate on the upper surface, I don't know if you're going to see that or not. Probably not. I'll have to post some pictures maybe. But this, the, these parts, they just look really, really nice. Um, I'll have to get into the instructions and figure out what goes where, but I'm guessing we've got this and we've got this. These are the inside walls. Probably that way. There you go. That's that. So what else we got here? This says test tool on it. I don't know what that is. I'm sure I'll find out. That looks like the bow. Some of the uh, superstructure in the back here. More of that. This guy goes on there. Oh, there we go. It's already starting to make sense. Look at that. That goes there. Boy, that's a nice, nice fit for resin castings. Very nice. And then, uh, like I said, I guess this guy goes on there. 
Yeah, so okay, there's the the front door with all its detail on it. Bunch of more smaller pieces. Not sure what's in here. Oh, these are uh, four little tiny magnets. So something must get magnetized on there. And then there's the, uh, the pewter parts, the metal parts. Okay, that's a dude. That's a gunner. And that's another gunner. And that's another dude. So there's well, there's two gunners and a driver. I'm not sure which of those are which, but. And then there's just a lot of little metal fittings, the guns, the uh, the bumpers that hang over the side, the uh, the the wheel, uh, the steering wheel, as you would call it in a car. And yeah, the gun shields, the guns, a whole bunch of different little cool parts that uh, look like they should have been metal, and they are metal, so that worked out real good. The packaging was. Uh, Oh, so not important how it was packaged, but it was packaged very nicely. They spent a few bucks on die cutting this or laser cutting, I'm not sure. Um, but they did a good job of packing everything in here so it stayed nice. So this is, um, it's a little bigger than I was picturing in my head. I, Because I'm working on a, I'm working on a LCT, I think it is. It's the one that can hold four tanks. So I mean, it's about this wide, it's about that long. Um, I'm scratch building that. So in my in my brain, I was thinking this was going to be a whole lot smaller, um, but it is uh, it is sized for one tank, and that's you know that's the way it's going to work right there. It's going to fit perfectly. A few moments later, throw that in there. Yep, it's just going to fit nice. That's going to be a beauty. So, anyways, uh, so first impressions are that. The, the parts are amazing. The details amazing. The castings. I don't know what their technique is for resin casting. Some sort of vacuum casting, I'm sure, because the the the, the resolution they're getting, the detail they're getting, it's just quite amazing. They do a really good job. Uh, like I said, it looks it looks like uh, these look like injection molded parts, but they are resin. So they're doing a really cool technique there. Probably spending some serious bucks on their equipment to do this, but it's obviously paying off. So I will uh, start assembling this, and I'll probably do another video later talking about how that went and showing you guys what it looks like. But uh, I'm looking forward to putting this together. It, it looks like a really, really cool kit. And like I said, well done, especially considering such a low production run. They didn't, uh, they didn't spare any expense as far as the instruction manuals and all that. Uh, you would kind of expect on a real limited production scale like this, they might just give you some pictures and say, you know, here, build the damn thing. But no, they, uh, this is right up there in quality with everything else they've ever done. So I'm impressed. Um, like I said, it was 130 bucks. Um, I imagine there's still some available at uh, Rubicon models. Um, I deal with Rubicon USA, you know, there's there's a .co.uk, I think there's a .jp, um, but you can order it if you want. Uh, I would recommend it. Um, like I said, it's, it's an expensive piece, but if you want a Higgins LCM3, this is how you're going to get one, and it's going to be beautiful. So let me get to building it, and we'll do another video that uh, gives you my impressions of all that later. So for now, 10 points out of 10. I don't see a single thing wrong with it. It looks beautiful. I'm very happy that I made this purchase and we'll see how it goes. So that's it for now. Let me get to playing with it and we'll get back to you guys later. So for now, keep on gaming.